This is an interview with Miss Marion Carey in her home at 12 Friendship Street, Newport, Rhode Island. It will be concerned with Miss Carey's life history and is part of the Newport Historical Society's Oral History Project. The interviewer is Beth Everett. The date is March 17, 1984. Miss Carey, do you consent to have this interview taped? Yes. To begin with, Miss Carey, where were you born? I was born in the house I'm living in right now. And uh, you want the date? If you want to give it. It's January 30th, 1905. Mm -hmm. And where were your parents born? My father was born over in Beth Road. When Beth, <laughs> it's now called something Boulevard. But um, it in, New in Newport, Newport. yeah. Mm -hmm. And his, and my mother was born in New York. Oh, the city. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe I better put my finger. My father's mother's name was Emily Shingle, and she was born in Bristol, England. And she and her sister came to this country as two... Uh, young girls, about 19, and they just uh, wanted to get out of England because they were having a hard time in England. They heard that this was a great country and everybody did well. So they came, I can't, I can't think of the date that they did come, but Aunt, she was Emily and, and uh, Aunt Mary lived down on Meeting Street, and uh, my father's mother was a very good businesswoman, and she um, started out by buying a big house that had a veranda all around, a great Victorian house, which is since cut in half so they could move it for the tennis courts. And which tennis courts? Over on Bath Road. You know, oh. the, uh, the big indoor tennis courts that they built. When you speak of Bath Road, you mean Memorial Boulevard today. Well, vice versa. <laughs> well, all right. I always think of it as Bath Road because it's the name we grew up thinking of it. Sir. Now, uh, she started a uh, boarding house, a big boarding house, and she had all the people who uh, came here early, that summer people that came and had to wait for their houses to be opened and ready for them. And she had a full house all the time. It was a, and my mother, when she came to Newport, as, she was a manager of a store on Bellevue Avenue, a decorating store. And she lived in, in the boarding house, and that's how she met my father. <laughs> and they were married. Uh -huh. And then, her, then uh, Grandma Carrie bought this house for them as a wedding present. Uh -huh. What year were they married, do you know? 1904. Uh-huh. I wanted to ask you, though, how did your mother and sister, I mean, her sister, just decide to come to Newport? Why did My mother and her sister. Well, you know, I should have... I, you know, I beg your pardon. It's your grandmother. My grandmother, And yeah. her sister. How did they happen to choose Newport? I don't really know. I never asked. And I was, I was so young when she died mm -hmm. that I just remember I was about... Oh, four or five years old, and uh, I just knew of her from what people said of her, and they didn't know why she came to Newport either, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. Well, your father, you say, came from New York? No, my mother came oh. from New York. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> my father was born on Bath Road, mm -hmm. Memorial Boulevard. That's right, I understand. Yeah. Getting confused. Uh, well, how did they happen to meet if they were from different... Well, she came and she bought it at Grandma Carrie's house. Oh, I so see. So she met my father. I see. And he was um, a young man who was just out of school, and he, he um, she had bought him a business down on uh, Thames Street. In, uh, he was a partner, Burlingame and Carrie. It was a fish market, and mm -hmm. a, uh, it's where the Narragansett <laughs> Uh, Clothiers first started mm -hmm. in that store down on Thames Street. And my father was very hard working and willing, and they just 
Burlingame was an awful crook, oh. a real terrible crook. He was the mayor of Newport at one time, and uh, really a very um, dangerous man in a way. And <laughs> now, my my mother's uh, mother was born in Holland, and she and her husband came to this country as newlyweds. And it was because they were having a hard time. And he was a mathematics teacher in Holland, and he had just lost his job and couldn't get another job as a mathematics teacher. And he heard that he could easily get one in New York, so he came to New York alone. And then he sent for her, but he couldn't get a job as a mathematics teacher. So he opened a stationery store because he wanted to get her over here. And she came and. Uh, they lived on a, on Park Avenue, as it turned out, but before Park Avenue was so uh, uh, expensive. <laughs> what's the word? Aristocratic. Yeah, it was a. Um, it's downtown Park Avenue, I guess. Oh, what? What was Fort below Fourteenth? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And um, both my grandmothers married twice. Their husbands died when they were, uh, you know, they had a, had the children, and then. They married again, each one of them. Mm -hmm. And um, Grandma, uh, Grandma White, who was my mother's, uh, well, she was Calsoven when she married Maurice Calsoven. And then she, she was Van Hoven in uh, Holland. And um, she had four daughters, and one of them died from heat stroke at Coney Island, if you can imagine that. <laughs> And then uh, she was having a hard time after her husband died, so um, <laughs> I can't blame her. Now, um, I can't remember where I was. And my grandmother was having a hard time in New York, and a good friend of her first husband married her, I think, out of uh, sympathy for her difficulties. He was a uh, wonderful man. Grandpa White was our hero all our lives. <laughs> we loved him. And um, he was very, uh, took care of everything so well. He was a uh, steward at the Ansonia Hotel. Now, um, <clears throat> let me ask you, uh, you said your father's uh, business was on 10th Street. You have what area of 10th Street was it? I can't remember how far down that star is. It's still there. Oh, no, it isn't there now. Nothing's there now that was there, is yeah. it? I would think it wasn't further down than going down John Street. Oh, mm -hmm. to 10th Street, if you could. Yes. Everything is so different now. Yes. But I think it's about there. Mm -hmm. And it had, it had a uh, sort of a narrow piazza out front with a post in the middle and then two bay windows. And I can still remember that telephone number was 258. Oh, <laughs> simple numbers in those days. <laughs> yes. And um, one of one turn, when Burlingame went off with all the money. Oh, yes. And uh, Dad had to quit the store, and let's see what he did next. I can't remember. Want to turn it off? Your grandmother? Grandma Carrie had four daughters by her husband who was, let's see, the first husband she had, she had one, one daughter, and her name was Ryan. She had married a man named John Ryan, mm -hmm. her first husband, and she had one daughter. And that daughter um, was Lena, and then she, he died, and then she married Carrie, John Carrie he was, and um, they were both drunken Irishmen. <laughs> but uh, Grandma told my mother, but you should have seen them. She said they were so wonderful looking. <laughs> but she was the great. Uh, uh, businesswoman, and they they were. She kept the whole family going, and she when she died, she left them each a house, mm -hmm. as well as this one that they that she gave my father, and um, she had four daughters by Carrie, Sally, and 
Ida and Kelly, what was the other one? Sally and Ida. Well, maybe not. I guess I was thinking of Lena, who was Ryan's daughter, mm -hmm. and then my father, who was the youngest of everybody, and that was um, the end of her family, and then he died, and she carried on as a widow. But her business was catering. Mm. She would, um, she had an old horse named Duchess, uh -huh. and a, a man who had been a slave, who was her driver, a black man named Tom, and a very nice old man, and he uh, took her to all these houses that she catered for. She, she made out the list from the chefs, uh, what the chef wanted to order, and did any errands that needed to be done, and made sure that they had the right uh, uniforms washed and the everything done just to keep the house going well. She was a sort of a, resident, you know, an itinerant house mistress, I suppose you'd call it. And then uh, she had quite a number of these houses that she took care of every morning and did the shopping and had them send them up. And <clears throat> when it turned out, uh, my father had, his mother wanted him to go to MIT, but he couldn't, um, he wanted to get married instead, so he, he never did take the test, I think. I can't remember whether he did and failed it or couldn't pass it. or I can't remember what happened then. But um, after he had, after the business had closed, they went bankrupt after that because of um, Burlingame making off with all the money. The... Um, my father took a job as a chauffeur for uh, Mrs. Larland, who was one of my, his mother's tenants in her house mm. before she got to her own house each year. And then... Um, Which Mrs. Larland was that? Mrs. Um, Louis Larland. She was a, um, the, the mother of, of Louis Larland. Uh -huh. Elderly woman lived on Catherine Street, mm -hmm. and then um, he drove for her, and then he, um, let's see, she died finally, and he got another job as a chauffeur. He hated the chauffeuring business, mm -hmm. but it was uh, he wasn't equipped to find a job that um, was a better job for him. His mother had died, and. Uh, he was just wanting to keep the house going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and his sister Sally was supposed to be very beautiful. And she had married a man named Sanford Gladding, who ran a grocery store over on the point on the corner of Bird Street in Washington. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a, he had a lot of sisters that were unmarried and uh, there was a house up at the corner where they uh, all lived, a red, where the nurse's home is now, oh, yes. a red wooden house. And we have pictures of that with their uh, Sally and Sanford's children sitting in a buckboard out in front. Mm -hmm. And my sister and I, I guess we were on those little kitty car things you push. <laughs> mm -hmm. But... Um, this uh, Warren Gladding became a uh, Navy flyer and uh, was in all the battles out in the war. World War One. Let two? me think when it was. No, World War Two. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was very good and finally died of a heart attack. Mm. And then Tom is still alive in Florida with his wife, Mary Alice, who is the secretary for the man who discovered DNA, James Watson. Oh, was that so? <laughs> yeah, wasn't that something? Uh -huh. She was his secretary for a good many years, and he didn't want to lose her, but Tom had to get down to Florida because he had arthritis badly, and they said he should be in, live in a warm place, mm -hmm. so she had to leave. Mm -hmm. And they gave her a big party, and 
Watson told her he'd never have such a good secretary again. Mm. Then, um, well, when your father was being a chauffeur and, and um, working for the his own company, did he have his children yet? When were they? Oh yeah, he, they were born. I was born then. In January, they were married in April. April tenth, April fifth, I guess it was the wedding anniversary. Yeah, April fifth. And I was born in January 30th. And then uh, my sister was born a year and a half after that. Mm -hmm. And that, then he always wanted a son. And then when my brother was born in 1916, my father, who had wanted a son all his life, he didn't take much comfort in him because they were not, not they didn't see eye to eye on anything at all. Mm -hmm. It was hard on him because mm -hmm. he, he so much wanted a son that he could oh, rave about as being a football player and mm -hmm. a this, that, and the other. He yeah. didn't want that. He didn't want that at all. Mm -hmm. So uh, then my father uh, got a wonderful break. He worked over at Epley's Laboratory, which is over on uh, Darfield Street. That's Newport also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see, the Darfield or Sheffield Avenue, the, the thing where they ran through to get... Garfield. And they were a firm that Marion Epley uh, started, and they had a, they got out a, a test unit for one electric ampere, which was very necessary to all the electrical business that were expanding, all the things that were happening, and, and it was the mainstay of the business as a side effect. And solar heating was, or solar Exploration was their hmm. uh, chief thing then, and um, already so early. Yeah, and um, they kept a lot of records of solar heat and what how they how it could be collected and what they could do about uh, building houses that would be heated by solar heat. So um, my father uh, went over there and. Because Ralph Emerson, who was the uh, head of the, the manager of the firm, uh, asked him if he'd like to be there, and my father was very happy to go. And he had a great time there. Everybody loved him. <laughs> we have pictures of him with the whole crowd. And uh, he was there until he died. Oh, then he had a long career there. Yeah. And what, what did he do? Uh, did he... Do experiments or well, they they all had it was a it was a very strange kind of a, a place. Everybody did everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they um, did what everybody was asked to do, and um, I know a lot of the girls that worked there too. There were some uh, friends of mine that have been there and they're still there ever since. And uh, mm -hmm. we've always kept in touch with the the lab. They were very good to Pa. Mm -hmm. And when he was, um, <laughs> the thing, the final thing that killed him was he uh, left the house one morning and he said, Bath Road looks wonderful. I'm going to bring the sled with me <laughs> and give it a try this noon. And so he took the sled in the car and he had the dog with him, a beagle. Mm -hmm. And um, he went down on the sled, and whatever happened, I don't know. We've never found out because he he was found. Um, let's see what happened. I don't know how he got up here. Oh, he walked up. He walked back after a while, but he'd been lying in the street. Mm. Bath Road was a hill that goes down to the beach. Yes, and uh, it's quite a steep hill and very very good for sliding. <laughs> and I'm sure that Power and the dog had a wonderful time. <laughs> but he uh, has never been the same since. He, he went, the, he went over, we took him to the hospital and Dr. Callahan, who was our doctor, was busy with an operation and couldn't see him right then. And he sat there all day long, and finally uh, Callahan said, I think you better 
plan that he's going to have a long time thing. He's not going to be the same again. He's hit his head, and I think he's damaged his brain. And he was um, kept in the hospital for quite a while. He knew us all and spoke to us, but he was often incoherent. Mm. And one morning we were all at breakfast here, and he came across the street in his hospital nightgown and oh. a bathrobe with his flowers in his hand, and he said, I'm not going back. <laughs> mm. So we let him stay here and uh, made up a bed for him in the den where it was more sunny and cheerful all day. Mm -hmm. And he was there for a solid year before he died. For goodness sake. Mm -hmm. well, and he got consecutively worse, you know, he got paralyzed. And, oh, what a shame. But you were talking about the sled. It must have been a snowy day. Was that, it was a snow oh, sled? Oh, it was snowy, very, uh -huh. uh, very uh, deep snow, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. We don't know. He just nobody saw him. He he just had to pick himself up and get home. I don't know mm -hmm. anything because he couldn't remember, mm -hmm. and uh, he was incoherent about what he had done and all. But we always remember that last remark. Bathrobe looks wonderful. Mm -hmm. well, that's a sad story. Mm -hmm. well, what about your mother? Um, of course, she took care of the children and the house, but did she ever do anything? Oh, she that? was remarkable too. The women in the family were all remarkable. Mm -hmm. She uh, had been an uh, art student in New York, and she had um, studied with William Chase, and he. Uh, then she had decided that she had to make some money because the family needed it, and she went into a, the decorating side, and she was the manager of a decorating house, and. Madison Avenue, I think it was, and then really? they sent up a sent her up in the summers to run the business here, open the business and all. Well, where was that business? Do you know? On Bellevue. Uh -huh. About because um, everything is different there now. I think it was in um, the second set of houses. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was in the casino block. I think it was the casino uh -huh. block. So, and that, and Grandma Carrie's house is just around the corner and down Beth Road. So, uh, very convenient. But anyhow, my mother started painting, <laughs> painting things and making things, and every year they'd get off a big box to an exchange. Uh, they call it a woman's exchange in those days mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh. And the, that big box always paid the taxes, the things that she made and put in it. My father made too. They made pin cushions. I can show you some upstairs. Mm -hmm. Pin cushions and um, calendars and string reels and mm -hmm. all kinds of things that mother put all these roses on. I don't know whether I have any pictures with the roses or not. I guess I, I like must to, have. Like and tin trays and so on and so mm -hmm. on. I'm surprised that they went to Pittsburgh instead of New York where there's a women's exchange. Yeah, I, I am too. I don't know why this was. Mm -hmm. See, there's so many things you don't ask when you're little. Yeah. And nobody thinks to tell you. Sure. It's just accepted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so she contributed to the income quite Oh, a lot. Yeah, a great deal. Uh -huh. And always did, right up to the time she died, really. Mm -hmm. So that's how where you came by your artistic talent. Yes, I suppose so. Mm -hmm. Now, her uh, grandma White's family, her mother's family, was quite interesting in Europe. They uh, had a lot of French connections. Her mother was Catherine Van Hoven, and her mother's mother was Catherine Van Hoven, and they had some... Uh, cousins in France who were very well known as painters. Their name was Goudet, and they um, they often spoke of them. And there was a big family that came over one at a time. Was, I think there were nine children that Catherine Van Hoven had, and my mother's mother was one of them. And I think there were nine children. And one at a time, they all came over and did very well here. Mm -hmm. One is a big um, flower grower in Florida, flowers and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And another one is a uh, 
banker in uh, Rutherford, New Jersey. Uncle John, I hated him. <laughs> <laughs> he was always so patronized oh. to us all. No wonder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he wasn't a bit good. And his wife, Aunt Alice, wasn't good either. But um, the other members of the family we liked very well. Mm -hmm. but, uh, well, did your father do anything about keeping the house up? Was he good about Oh, he was horrible. Mm -hmm. They did. They worked very hard, the two of them. And I think how hard they worked to keep the house. They didn't have a mortgage on it, and they never... They did finally have to get two mortgages. Yeah, that's right. Because Pa was no businessman at all. Uh -huh. And But he worked so hard, and they had... He raised violets in the backyard for Easter, uh -huh. and my mother would bunch them. Kip and I would pick them, my sister and I. And she would bunch them, and they'd have small bunches for two dollars and a half, and mm -hmm. bigger ones for five dollars. I think that was as big as they got. Mm -hmm. But and they came, they were sent out in wonderful white shiny boxes with lilies of the valley and mm -hmm. stick pins and How pretty. <laughs> oh, you really know to hold them on. Mm -hmm. And they were we. Always sold. Every single bar it was sold. Mm -hmm. I imagine. And did the did you children have to do jobs in, around the house too, or, or did Yeah, you? we each had jobs. We got twenty five cents a week. I took oh. care of the den. That was my job to keep that uh, brushed up and clean. Mm -hmm. And my sister had the piazza. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we we used to use that a lot in those days because it was. Uh, wasn't dusty the way it is now, you know, the street is so yes. dusty and yes. so many roaring trucks going by, but it was very quiet and nice in those days. Mm -hmm. well, the whole hospital yard was our playground. Oh, is that so? Is that where you play? <laughs> it was a lovely place uh -huh. where the uh, entrance is here. Uh -huh. I guess it was much smaller in those days, the hospital. Oh, yes, much. And the entrance is down where the columns are now. Mm -hmm. And it was a tennis court and a big elm tree and an apple orchard over and through here. Oh, is that and we used to play lee stocks in there. And play what? Lee stocks. It's a great game. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most wonderful game. We used to have about nine people on the team. Two teams of, I'll say, five on each side. And... Uh, <clears throat> We'd have maps about what we called our bunks, mm -hmm. and uh, each of the bunks had a name, and we would, the idea was you had to hide, and uh, if you were seen or caught, you had to run so that they wouldn't uh, uh, tag you. If you were tagged, then you were the ones who had to find the other side next, you know, the next time you played. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> It was a game we made up, I think, but it was just the most fun. Where did you get the name? Lee Stocks? I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> we used to have to give uh, signals, too. You had to holler, la 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 Lee Stocks. <laughs> you really had imagination. Oh, well, we had a great time, uh -huh. yeah. Were there uh, a lot of children in the neighborhood? Oh, lots of children. As I, I walk around the neighborhood now and my daughtering way. I think of each family had a child or two children mm -hmm. that we knew well mm -hmm. through all the streets and the and down Friendship and all. And now they're all gone. There isn't one that's the same people anymore. That it's used complete to change. Yeah. So what happened is that um, in this particular neighborhood, all the houses had children and families, and then. The mother and the children would marry and leave town or move to their own new house, and the father and mother would die finally, and the house would be sold, and somebody would buy it who would make two apartments of it, oh. and so and then those changed a lot, the people that lived in them. Yes. So that we I got so we don't know anybody mm -hmm. up the top of the street or down the this way mm -hmm. at all, and. Um, the people but, next door are the only ones that have been there since, as we have been all this oh, time. Oh, what are their names? Savage. Savage. It used to be Patterson. Mm -hmm. And then when Lillian married, uh, they lived in the Patterson's house, and then her father and mother died, and 
they still live there. Mm -hmm. So, and they have four children. Yes. Well, when you were growing up, then it was a very friendly neighborhood, and you liked most of your neighbors. Did you see a lot of them and do things with them? No, we didn't see our neighbors at all. Oh, you didn't? Just no. the children? Just the children, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder why you're... My you're... mother and father were so busy. Oh, yes, I see. And uh, they weren't people that we specially liked. Oh, I see. And Kip and I enjoyed the friends in the neighborhood, our friends, very well. Mm -hmm. But we had no reason for the parents to get together. Well, did they have a different... Um, way of making a living, or was their religion different? What, what was the difference? And so your family didn't have time to be very friendly with their neighbors, uh, except... No, just to see them on the street and mm -hmm. talk with them. Uh -huh. They were never uh, standoffish or anything, mm -hmm. but they were just so terribly busy. Well, did they feel like they could rely on their neighbors if they needed any help? Did they ever have to call on them for any assistance or vice versa? I don't think so. Uh -huh. I've never heard of that. Mm -hmm. But um, my father was a winter bather. He was the one that started all this winter bathing. He did. <laughs> he used to go every day with the dog to the beach. Four times he would go, oh. early in the morning before he went to work, and at lunchtime, and when he'd come home from work, and then sometimes at night. And um, Even in the winter? Yeah, he, well, he didn't swim in the winter, you see. Oh. But what he would do, he had a, a you know, he liked to have, he had, a, he was a great athlete in school. Um, he was a captain of the football team and the captain of the tennis team and the captain of the, uh, the baseball team. Uh, it was a small high school, but he was uh, the preeminent athlete, I guess. And he, he was darn good looking, a lot of curly blonde hair. Mm -hmm. and uh, Girls all thought he was... Great. <laughs> well, what school was that now? Hmm? Where was the school? Rogers High School. Oh, on down Broadway. on Broadway. Uh, where, where Tom? Let's see, wait a minute. It, it, it was at Lenthal. The high school was at Lenthal when he was a boy. Oh. Then they moved it up to Broadway oh. um, in his senior year, I guess. I see. Well, now, um, where was I? Uh, he was a very good athlete. Oh, Very yeah. attractive. But I was going to tell you something about him that I can't remember. See, swimming is such a, a big event around here now, the winter bathers. And as I say, he always went in all winter just because he loved it and he didn't feel the cold. Mm. And we had pictures of <laughs> my sister and I at the beach and we're all done up in heavy clothes and he's in his bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> and pushing the slush away to get into the water. Oh, no. <laughs> Did he start the polar bears or whatever they're called? He didn't start them. I mean, that that's all since his time. He, oh, he was just the first one. And then he had a friend who came in with him, Louis Hobbs. Mm -hmm. And um, he and Louis had a great time together doing long walks. They would walk from Providence to Newport, or they'd walk from... Oh, uh, my goodness. Yeah, New Bedford to Newport. And I was talking with Louis the other day. He's, he's 93 now. And... Uh, can't even leave the house. He says he never goes out anymore because mm -hmm. he's not sure of himself on his feet. Mm -hmm. But I had invited him for Christmas dinner, and he's very deaf, but he can hear on the telephone. And he, mm -hmm. he didn't like to let me go. We talked all about their long walks, oh. <laughs> all the things they used to do together. Well, when they took those walks, that's just amazing. It must have stayed overnight somewhere. They couldn't no, have done it no, all in one they day. They did it all in one day, yeah. Good took them they long were the early walk. joggers. They must have run. <laughs> no, they walked fast. They walked a good clip. Uh -huh. But they didn't have to uh, stay overnight. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my father and Louie and I uh, went around the island in a canoe, uh -huh. the island of Aquidneck. Uh -huh. We started at Newport Beach and went around to Bailey's Beach for the first uh, time, you know, the first day. Let's see, was it Bailey's Beach we stopped? No, we went by Bailey's. And we we stopped at King Park. That was our first stop. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's all the way around the drive. Mm -hmm. And I sat in the middle of the boat <laughs> with the water coming in over the gun. Oh. <laughs> and when we got to... Uh, 
where you turn off into the channel, mm -hmm. you know, by Brent Reef, you know, yes. where that is. Yes. Uh, my father said to a fisherman who was um, in a fishing boat going by, he says, can you tell us the way to Black Island, please? <laughs> And said, wow. go to hell. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, the, the, they stopped at um, King Park, and then they, the next time they went up and around to Island Park, and then down home, oh. down the Sakonic River. Oh, my goodness. Three times, yeah. And uh, it was quite a, I, I think I had the hardest job, because it was awfully hard sitting in that boat. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah, you get so sunburned and mm. you uh, your behind gets so tired. Mm -hmm. I should have had a cushion, except that it would have been so wet that it uh, would have been probably worse than nothing. Well, how did you happen to be chosen to go instead of your brother well, or sister? I, oh, well, my brother never liked the canoe. Oh. <laughs> and he couldn't swim. Uh -huh. And I don't know how, except that I liked the whole business. And mm -hmm. my sister, where was she? I can't think where she was that she didn't go. I can't even remember the year we went and did that. Mm -hmm. Well, but, you were a child, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my father taught us how to ice skate and how to... Mm -hmm. We had great ice skating in those days down in the pond, the big mm -hmm. pond. Yeah. And we had a little pond at the foot of the street. <laughs> and the year we graduated from going to the little pond to going to the big mm -hmm. was the big year of our lives. Oh. And when I, the big pond, you mean the Easton's Pond, the back of the pond, beach? Easton's Pond, yeah. Mm -hmm. We'd go down um, Ellery Road and cross on a little plank over the creek that's around the pond and up on the dike. And in those days, everybody skated. On a good Sunday, a good uh, sunny day, there'd be thousands down there. You, would, you wouldn't believe it, how many. So. And people would be standing six deep around the dike. Mm -hmm. at this end, you know, all the way along, mm -hmm. down this way and down to the beach that way, watching the skaters. Oh, like Central Park. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was great fun. And, yeah, mm -hmm. we don't have ice anymore. Isn't that strange? It is. Yeah. And did anybody ever fall through the ice? It was always very oh, thick. Oh, yeah. It was <laughs> My father used to skate on it, and it was barely thick enough to oh. skate on. And he had a... Uh, a stunt that he used to do is to swim down to the beach and then go and swim, I mean, skate to the beach and then go swimming. Oh. But he he just did it himself. He didn't make a thing of it, you know, mm -hmm. a great to do. He never got a cold or pneumonia or anything? He never had a winter. cold, never had a cold. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, and you were really very close to your, your parents, yeah. your brother and sister. It was a mm -hmm. close knit family. Um, what sort of uh, ambitions did your family, your I mean, your mother and father, have for you children? Did they want you to go to school? Did they encourage you to study? Or well, I got a scholarship to the School of Design, so I, that's where I went. You mean in New York? Where? In Providence. Oh, in Providence. Oh, RISD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my sister went and trained at this hospital as a nurse, mm -hmm. and then she went to uh, Glen Cove because she wanted to. Uh, get a degree or something in a bigger hospital. And was there a hospital at Glen Cove? Yeah. Oh. That's Long Island. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she, uh, that's where she met her husband. She was banking her salary, and he was a bank teller. <laughs> oh, I see. And that's how she met him. Mm -hmm. So then they were married, and uh, after they had three children and they used to come up and stay with us for two weeks every summer, mm -hmm. and um, sometimes four weeks. And it was always such a a lot of kids yelling all the time. <laughs> there was yeah, three children, and uh, finally one day they said we were going to the third beach to swim. Uh, they said to me, I think as long as we're going to come up here to retire, we ought to buy a piece of land we can build on before it all gets too expensive. Mm. So I said, um, I know a good place to look. So we went down <laughs> Wapping Road and mm. turned in on uh, what's now where they do live. And there was a 
the land had just been made into a place you could buy lots. It was a farm, East Orchard Farm it was, mm -hmm. belonged to the Peckhams, and he was building his own house on the piece of land. And we stopped and said, do you know who owns this land? He said, well, I do. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, would you sell us a lot? And he said, sure, I will. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> And they said, how much is the lots? And they, he said, uh, 2000 yeah, $2,300 a piece. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, for a half an acre it was. So they bought the lot next to him, and it had a great big uh, rise where he put the street, he made a street like an U shape that ran all the way into the farms so that people could get their uh, lumber and whatnot in there. And in order to make the street, because it was on a slope, he had had to make a big pile of dirt that was next to the left side of the road. You know, it was all the way along the road, like a great mound. Yeah. So they couldn't know they had a great big rock in their front oh. yard until they uh, knocked down that pile of dirt. And it's a lovely rock. I imagine they're glad to have it. Oh, very glad, mm -hmm. but it was the hardest thing to uncover. Mm -hmm. We all worked on it. You did. Mm -hmm. We built a house and they rented it to the War College for 10 years before they came up here after Bert retired to live there themselves. Mm -hmm. and they're still there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I was asking you uh, what your family wanted you to do. Did they encourage you to be an artist? Uh, or was this all your idea? Well, you had the scholarship and there was nothing else I wanted to do and it, it paid all the um, tuition and uh -huh. my father gave me $15 a week to um, live in a place called, uh, gosh, I can't remember the name of the house. Oh, it's a house on Governor Street. You lived up there. You didn't commute then. No, I lived up there during the week and came home weekends. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. And um, I taught a class. Where did I teach? Oh, I had all kinds of classes on Saturdays in the playground. I taught basket weaving. I taught uh -huh. making lampshades down the community center. That was in Providence or here? Here. Here. Mm -hmm. I had all kinds of jobs to make some money to buy some supplies and help. No, you have to have some money to get a yes. get home every weekend and so on. Yes. And fifteen dollars. Well, power well. always managed to get it for me. Yes. But it was a. Uh, I knew it was hard on him. Mm-hmm. And I was there four years, four and years. I got all the prizes in the school. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I got oh. all of them. Uh-huh. Well, and, but before you went to RISD, you must have had some training here too, didn't you? Did you? No. Not a bit? Just in the high school. Uh, uh -huh. I had a terrible high school teacher. Simply awful. Mm. And uh, never liked her the least bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she didn't have anybody that uh, did as well as I did, so she offered it to me. and. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything else I wanted to do, so I took it. Uh-huh. Well, you didn't, uh, I know Edith Rosian went to the Art Association class. Yes, I Did didn't you, go to that. You the, didn't go to those? No. That seems very strange when you were... Well, it cost right some money, and we oh, didn't it did. have it. Oh, I and see. Because uh, Mr. Bojan, uh, he always sent people, to eat. if he had $10 in his pocket, he sent his son to Yale. <laughs> yes. And that's all the money he had in the world was $10. I know. And he managed to, the son managed to get scholarships mm -hmm. and help from people around. Mm -hmm. Well, did you, um, you really enjoyed your career up at uh, Rhode Island School of Design then? Yeah, I had a fine time. Mm -hmm. You must have if you won all the prizes. Well, I worked hard too. <laughs> of course, I know you did. Yeah. But what, what sort of prizes do you mean? Do I mean? Mm -hmm. What sort of well, prizes were first, they? The first year we, it was the all-star. We had cast drawing the first year as far as the drawing. Then we had life drawing and uh, general drawing upstairs. We didn't do any painting until the second year. Mm -hmm. And then we, <clears throat> I got the cast drawing prize and then the life drawing prize and the portrait prize. Mm -hmm. and the, Those were the three big prizes that they mm -hmm. offered each year. Those were just recognition prizes? No, they were... Um, 
hundred dollars a piece. Oh, that certainly it helped. helped yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. And you did you in the summer times between uh, uh, semesters? Did you continue to study, or did you come home and stay here? Oh, I worked in all over the town that in the summertime. Uh -huh. You know, at the at the uh, playground and the site, community center. Uh -huh. Had a lot of different classes that I taught. Uh -huh. And my mother had taught us how to make these lampshades, and my sister and I were for everlasting making lampshades. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a prize for one of the lampshades, too, Didn't at the you? county fair. Yeah. Oh, how nice. <laughs> it was a beautiful thing. It was oval, uh -huh. and it was pink chiffon over pink oh, satin, very pale. Goodness. And then it had a swag of flowers that I made out of silk and uh, all the different materials, and it had a swag on each side, and then a bow that I made out of um, very nice ribbon that I sewed on to the shade. It really was a stunning Must shade, beautiful. and beautifully made. <laughs> Did you take a picture of it? Do you no. have a picture of Oh, that's too bad. I don't know what happened to it, even. Mm. Did somebody yeah. buy it? Or I don't remember anything about no. what happened to it after it the prize was only forty dollars. You know how they are at county fairs. <laughs> oh yes. Which but county fair was that here? In out in Middletown. In Middletown. A uh, Portsmouth, I guess it was. Yeah, mm -hmm. Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> well, so you really you worked all the time, and when you did you enjoy teaching these uh, crafts courses and so well, on? Well, finally, I became the after I got through the school. I came to the Art Association as a place to pay. Uh -huh. I went there without, um, I guess I paid tuition the first year. I had saved it up and I had uh, classes that I taught there. As soon as I got there, Ms. Helena Sturdivant, who was in charge of the school, mm -hmm. offered me the children's classes and I taught the uh, Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon mm -hmm. in the ch teaching painting and also uh, drawing for the younger one. Mm -hmm. And then um, after that first year, she made me a monitor of the class so that she wouldn't have to get in there so early and I didn't pay any oh. tuition. And I'd, I'd get the models and pose the models. I got so indispensable that finally, uh, she decided to retire and left me in charge of the class. Mm -hmm. And then Mrs. Elliott, who was the head of the Art Association, she's the one whose husband founded it. Was that Maud Howe? Maud Howe, yes. Yeah. She uh, and a lot of the other women thought I should <laughs> go to Europe and uh, so that I'd have more, what's the word? Um, experience? Or? Experience, I suppose, of what goes on in Europe. You see, everybody went to Europe. Yes. In their their time. And so they all saved up and gave me five hundred dollars. Oh. And I had saved up two hundred and fifty. So I went to Europe for nine weeks on Did you? <laughs> and seven hundred and fifty dollars. How wonderful. Yeah. And, and went alone. Yeah, I went alone. Went on a ship. Went on a ship. Which I went ship on did the you on the Volcania and uh -huh. came back on the Normandy. Oh, did and it you was really? wonderful fun. And, oh, I had a great time. <laughs> Where did you go? Well, it was, the, it was the year 39. It was the last few minutes before oh, the war, yes. so I saw the whole place before everything became different. The last possible time to go. Mm -hmm. There weren't any other Americans. Can you imagine that? Well, did you speak another language? Did you speak French or German? No, I, I had studied French in high school, but I don't speak it. Mm -hmm. I, I found... <laughs> I was tried to buy my father a present to when I was coming back, and I went to the Galerie Lafayette, and yes. I said, but I thought was I want a bathing suit for my father, <laughs> yeah. and they, <laughs> I had asked for a, uh, what was it, a sailor for my father. Well, did you, where did you go first? Did you go to France first? No, first, oh, we had quite, I had quite the, I spent so much time figuring out where I wanted to go, and all these people were so helpful. I had letters everywhere. Mm -hmm. First, I went to the Madeira Islands. Oh, really? 
And we had a, an afternoon stop there with the boat, and then we went through the to Gibraltar. Oh. And we had a going a short time there, and then to Algeria, and then to Sicily. It was a cruise ship. Oh, then to Naples. Oh, <laughs> I went to Palermo and Montreal, and, and I kept a diary, and it's really very good. Oh, did you? I read it uh, before I lost my eyesight, and I was amazed that it was so good because it was just done at odd times at night or on the train or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, went to Naples and then from Naples to <laughs> Pompeii mm -hmm. and Capri mm -hmm. and Salerno, all of it, and back to Naples and a bus trip to Florence mm -hmm. and then from Florence to Siena and then to Rome and then to Milan, and through the pass to Switzerland, mm -hmm. and went up Riga. Mm -hmm. Goodness. <laughs> yeah, you know, cable cars, great fun. Mm -hmm. And then went to Paris and stayed. I was I stayed two two weeks in Rome and three weeks in Paris, and we had a wonderful friend in Paris that. A woman whose portrait I had uh, got me the um, name of this friend whose husband, she was the, her husband was a naval attaché in Paris. And her name was Janie Hillencotter, and he was the last American in Paris before the, he met the Germans. And there were pictures of him on the television uh, at the meeting when the Germans came into Paris. You remember that time? I often wonder what happened to them. Yes, you never heard. I don't know why. I, well, first they were there in Paris all during the occupation, and they were the young, they were the uh, people that dealt with the Germans. So I couldn't reach them anyway. And then I didn't know where they went after that, and I was I was very busy by then in the school. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I went out to the Cove during the war, and. Um, Worked for the worked for the government drawing pipes that turned out, and I did pipes very well. They say that my pipes are the only ones that ever fit. <laughs> well, I, I, well, I, I, I want to hear more about that later. That sounds very interesting. But I'd like to hear more about your trip right now, if you don't mind. Uh -huh. uh, you must have specialized, of course, in going to art galleries. Oh yeah, I went to all the museums. Yes, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and you. I just love Paris. I have always mm -hmm. wished I could go back there, but I suppose it's so different now. I wouldn't like it. It probably is. Yes. It was so marvelous. We just absolutely felt this is our home. <laughs> well, you say we? Did you? Well, uh, I met a girl and... who was. Um, we, I thought I would go with her, but she wanted to go to, down the coast of France. <clears throat> rather than on the volcano and through, you know, see all these things in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. So we met in Florence finally and then went the rest of the way together, but we didn't always do the same things, you know, we, yes. each, we had different interests. Yes. So, uh, was, was she was, an artist too? Well, she was at the School of Design, but oh. she never became an artist. Mm -hmm. She. Uh, she's always had art interests. I got a postcard from her the other day from Narcissus, and um, she's there with her son Nick, uh -huh. and she's she, she's so hard up. She's had such a lot of terrible injuries, and yet um, she certainly keeps going. She I still can't. goes. Uh -huh. Well, now. <clears throat> well, then when you came back, well, I went to England too after, oh, you did. after uh -huh. Paris. I went uh -huh. from Paris to Holland, and was at the Hague, and I didn't look up. <laughs> I called up my. Mother's family, but I, I uh, got them at the bad time. You know, it was a, everybody was so worried about the war. Yes, certainly. And um, I didn't pursue it. I knew it was a bad time. She had to go. The girl I called up, I can't remember her name now, Heinrichi Shelton, I think so. Mm -hmm. And she uh, 
I could see it was just the worst time. You know how it is sometimes when somebody catches you at a bad moment? Yes, sir. So I, I just said, well, I just wanted to talk with your mom on the phone. Mm -hmm. But I would like to have seen her and see how yes. she lived and all. And then I went across to the Hook of Holland mm -hmm. and to England that way. Mm -hmm. You and stayed in London a while? Stayed in London and took side trips around. Mm -hmm. I love London. We had wonderful weather in England. The whole week of wonderful you? weather, yeah. Uh -huh. And then came home in the volcano. Uh -huh. Was this with Ashley summer? Montague. <laughs> oh, really? You remember Ashley Montague? Well, not too well, but I certainly remember the name. And um, with a man who was in the RAF. So we had a great time. Uh -huh. Well, that was in the summertime. Yeah, and also the woman who who's I had a letter to in England, it was the sister of the purser on the nominee, mm -hmm. and she gave me a card to him, and he invited us up to swim in the first class oh. swimming pool, which was so much nicer than our third class swimming sure. pool. Sure. We had tourist tickets, mm -hmm. so we all went up there every afternoon and had a great swim. <laughs> And, of course, you were a good swimmer, being your father's daughter, I yeah. imagine. <laughs> oh, we had a lovely time. Well, when you came back here, um, where did, did you go to work for the I went back to the school, but then um, in 1941, you see, I came back in the summer of 39. Yes. And the uh, war started right away. Yes. And in 1941... They asked for anybody with art experience to help out with the blueprints of the torpedoes. Oh, I see. So we had to take a course at the uh, high school at night, mm -hmm. and then uh, we were sent out to the sent across to the island torpedo station yes. island at that time. I see. And we were there a year, and then we went out to the cove, so called the cove. And where was that? That's out in Brenton. Uh, out in Middletown. You see it on the right as you go out on the train. Have you been out Melville? in Melville? Yes, I've been up on the train. Is that where Melville is? Or the, it, uh, let's see. It's in, it isn't as high up as Melville. It's mm -hmm. um, Chase's Lane. Oh. We, we used to... I had an old car, and I used to take a lot of people. See, you couldn't get gas unless you had to drive people to work, and it was valuable work, so... Mm -hmm. I, t I took a picture of a lot of people on the way, and we had such terrible tires that we had to change the tires once three times on the way out. <laughs> and we could do it in five minutes. We were so smart. <laughs> well, you must have been capable. Well, um, you say you drew pipes. Now, these were blueprints for pipes. What pipes were they? They were blueprints for the... Torpedo, yeah. And we started in by just uh, inking them. We learned had learned how to ink in this school, and we we were just there to learn this simplest kind of drawing in a way. Mm -hmm. But we got so good at it, we were much better than the men. <laughs> well, that's not surprising. We had eight hours a day, and we were being paid to do something we loved to do. Uh -huh. And I got so I had a. A wonderful job doing all the pipes in the midship shell and no, I, don't really, I don't understand the thing about that. Can you tell me a little more about it? <laughs> pipes in the midship shell? Well, What's the that? torpedo has a, a front end and a back end yes. and a midship thing that's about this wide. Uh -huh. And all the um, ammunition, the powder is in the back, mm -hmm. I guess. Now let me think, I can't remember very well. I can't remember mm -hmm. the detonator, and I know well, there are a great many valves in the midship shell, and they always trying to put in new ones and getting rid of older ones. Mm -hmm. So I had to have a a way of finding a way between the existing things they had to have to put the new pipe. And in order to do that, you have to know trigonometry, and oh. I had never had math in high school because my mother said I'd never need it. Oh, for heaven! And I. Uh, taught myself trigonometry and used it eight hours a day, and I got to love it. And Is I would prove everything out to the fourth decimal point, just just for fun, because it was fun to do. And I had this great little uh, calculator. Oh, is that so? Yeah, it was wonderful. 
I really enjoyed it. You didn't it. know you had a mathematical ability till you had to use it. That's right, That's and I love it. I absolutely love math. Oh. I would love to have been a mathematician. <laughs> you could have made a lot of money as a mathematician. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, you you were an artist, and you had that too. <coughs> where where shall I start? Well, just tell me how long you worked at the, uh, the, uh, at the torpedo problem? station. Well, I left there in 1945 when the war stopped. Oh, you stayed there all during the war. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was there for three and a half years, mm -hmm. and loved it. Really loved it. After mm -hmm. we got over the initial difficulty of all the men spending the morning deciding what horses to bet on <laughs> and the afternoon following the races really they were awful and they kept trying to make us join the union and we said what do we want to join the union for and they said well you get more money and i said but this is a war we're not here to make money mm -hmm. and they said are you crazy <laughs> they were awful men i thought is that so <laughs> And they came from all over, didn't they? They were they were the, the permanent staff at the yeah. walk home oh. at the uh, top station. Oh, they were the permanent staff. Mm -hmm. Well, it, while you were doing this work, did you have any time to paint or draw? No, not no. at all. No, it was a long day. Uh huh. And we worked seven, six days a week, and sometimes we went back on a Sunday. Oh my goodness! And it was crazy because there wasn't really all that much um, necessity for it because the top. The people that were in charge of the torpedo were... <coughs> now, you were mentioning... Uh... <coughs> Henrietta Johnson was a graduate of MIT, and she and I would go out and eat our lunch out on the bank and watch the torpedoes being tested. And they would go down from the airplane. These are the ones that would drop from planes. Uh -huh. And they'd porpoise along like this, <laughs> and then eventually they'd just sink. <laughs> and it was absolutely just a terrible, miserable business. They were so poor. And mm -hmm. when they fired a, a group of torpedoes at a ship, they would fire a fan of seven in order to make sure to hit it because they couldn't fire one and, and be sure they would. Mm -hmm. And then we would see all these terrible maneuvers they made. And we had just been working on a thing called depth and glider and you're supposed to go down and go seven feet under and go s smoothly along instead of going like this. Oh under. dear. <laughs> <laughs> but the men didn't know how to fix them. Mm -hmm. And they had decided, the men who were making the torpedoes couldn't make them from the blueprints they had. They had their own little books and they made them according to their books. Excuse me. Everything was so different. Yes. But then when I left did, there... Did you make friends out there? Did oh, you yeah. Did you a lot of people there? Mm -hmm. Lots of friends that I still have. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> when I left there in 1945, when the war was over, I went back to the Art Association and took over the as director of the school. Uh -huh. And my first classes, I had six painters in my first class, because people didn't paint then the way they did now, you know. Mm -hmm. Only a few people painted. So I had six people. I had Emily Sherman now, oh, and her sister Margar Marguerite, mm -hmm. and the two generosists, and John Grower. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, his friend, we were all... Uh, good friends, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we had a great time, and they painted like angels. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're absolutely great. There was a man, like Gordon Symes, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you say the two generists, who were they? <clears throat> they were uh, two of the people I went out to the drafting room with. Uh -huh. I took picked them up every morning. We got so used to it that when the war was over, they decided that they liked to at the Art Association. Oh, were they men, women? No, two women. Two women. What were their first names? Bella and Mary. Uh huh. And they were both very good painters, mm -hmm. and they painted really stunning things. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. And Mary always, <laughs> she painted one of her husband who was a, uh, <clears throat> he had a number in the federal government because he was a lawyer for the 
IRS. Is that what it is? IRS? Mm-hmm. Internal Revenue Service. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, so she painted him as a, yeah. He had a big gun in his hand. Oh. <laughs> and the number IRS was across the top of the. <laughs> It was great. Mm-hmm. It's still in their house, and they love it. I imagine. And it's a good painting of mm-hmm. it. Too. Well, then you had that one class. Did you have other classes? Well, I had the Saturday classes, too, then. Those were children, were Those they? were children. Mm-hmm. And then, as the school got bigger, because it only stayed that small for one year, mm-hmm. I had a lot more people come, and as it got, got very big, we got to use every single room in the second floor. Mm-hmm. And I had people waiting lists because 31 was all I could get in there without and have everybody have a decent elbow room to paint. This was in the same building it's in now in Bellevue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I taught the painting classes for something like 50 years. Did you really? (laughs) And I didn't retire until I had to have a heart operation. And uh, then I had to. So, uh, what year was that? That was 72. Uh-huh. Well, but you, you still don't. I thought you still taught there. I do, Thursday nights. Uh-huh. Just Thursday nights. And they, they really should get rid of me. I keep telling them I'm trying to wean them. I, I'm not any good to you. And I can't see what you're doing hardly. But they said, well, we can't get along without you. And we'll pick you up and bring you back and mm-hmm. pay our tuition. So. <laughs> well, you can't resist that. No. Well, I charge them very little. Nothing as much as they charge upstairs. Mm-hmm. I always charge only in the day classes. I used to charge $2 and a half a day, and then I raised it to 3 I guess, or two seventy five. Oh, you were moderate. Yeah, well, because, as I say, uh, it isn't like it was... It, it wasn't then the way it is now. Everything's sky high. Mm-hmm. Boy, the, the painting supplies are so expensive. Yes. I used to get out a whole outfit that we would put together called a, an outfit, I suppose. <laughs> and I laid them all out on this long table. And people would buy the whole thing for $12.50. Oh. It, was amazing. it was a piece of masonite, 16 by 20, that was varnished twice. And... <clears throat> Twelve tubes of paint and oil and turpentine mm-hmm. and five brushes. Camel hair? No, no. Uh, oil paint. One camel hair. Mm-hmm. And um, it was the, it was the minimum. Uh, what I thought was the minimum you should get along with, and it was the minimum of the school of design at the time too. Mm-hmm. So, well, that would cost a lot more now. Oh, golly, it would be 60. Oh, you couldn't buy it for anything. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because it was good stuff, very good stuff. And now everything, boy, one tube of paint, one tube of oil paint is $7. Terrible business. Yes. When I sent to some some art supplies for my evening class, I sent to Charette in in Cambridge, in Boston, mm-hmm. and they sent everything wrong. Em- everything was too high, too expensive and too wrong, and they sent one roll of unvarnished, unprimed canvas with four rolls of the other kind. So I didn't know what to do. I finally paid the bill. Because they charge you to send it back. Even. Yes. You, you have to wrap it up and mail it on your own expense, and then they charge you $5 for having sent it back, even if it's their fault. I wouldn't deal with them anymore. Well, they give a good discount, and they're close, mm-hmm. and they send it fairly soon. And every every firm in the country now, you have a minimum uh, order amount. If you have a discount of, say, 40% on a lot of things, you have to at least have a, an order that's over $100. And I don't know, I haven't dealt with Grumbacher recently. I don't know, I haven't got their recent catalog, but all the supplies have gone so high. Well, when you became director of the Art Association, uh, what were your responsibilities? What did you have to do besides teach? 
must have been quite a job. It was a job. And that's why I was too busy to see my neighbors. Uh-huh. Because my mother and father were both sick, you know, at different times. Uh-huh. Every time I'd come around the bottom of Friendship Street, I'd be afraid I'd see the ambulance outside of the door. Because it happened so often. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, your father, of course, was injured. What, uh, what Ill- ailment did your mother have? Oh, she had a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. But she lived to be 89, did she? Mm-hmm. And the last night of her life, she didn't come upstairs until after 12 o'clock. And I kept calling down, and I wanted to get to sleep because I had to go to work the next morning. Mm-hmm. And she said, I can't come up now because I have to finish all these uh, plans for meetings. I have five meetings next week, and if I don't get it done tonight, I'll never get it done. Mm-hmm. And so she stayed down until after 12, and then she came up and went to bed and uh, <coughs> woke up at 3.15 screaming mm-hmm. with pain and hardly able to breathe, and I called the fire department, and we took her across the street. And she died before morning. Mm-hmm. I think it was an embolism. They did yes. a, They wanted to do an autopsy, and I said, okay. And I think it must have been an embolism. But she was active up till the very oh, right, the last, last night. Second. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that's remarkable. This is a picture of her up here. Oh, yes. And this is my father over here with his granddaughter. Uh-huh, I can see. Very handsome people, both of them. Well, they're not, these are when they're both old. I know, but you can still tell. <laughs> this is taking the month she died. Is that so? Yeah. She looks so cheerful. Yeah, she was very cheerful. Mm-hmm. That was one thing she was. <clears throat> she could make any party happy. In fact, the, the summer that she died, they had offered her a job at the senior citizens to be the master of program. <laughs> is that so? <laughs> and then she was 89 years old. Mm-hmm. She'd been running the place practically without any pay for so long. Oh, did she? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> she had so many games she played with them that made them um, feel bright and happy. <laughs> yeah. But you were going to tell me what you did as a, as director of the Art Association. Oh. Well, I would have to get ready for the next day. See, everybody stayed. It was, the classes were 9 to 12. Or 9.30 and 12.30, I guess it was. And then, <clears throat> theoretically, I could then go home. But I always brought lunch, and we had a line up on the balcony of the stairs, which is a great big balcony. We mm-hmm. had frames, and we put <clears throat> the frames on standing up and put the pictures all in them and then discussed them mm-hmm. and criticized them. And then people would take them upstairs and do some work on them before they went home. And some of them stayed till about 5 o'clock. Oh. So I couldn't get ready then and for the next day until everybody went home. <clears throat> so I did what I could, and then I left about 2 or 2.30. And then uh, the next morning I'd get there in time. I'd get there at 8 o'clock and uh, get ready for the day. Well, when you say you got ready, uh, you mean you made your plans? I made, I made setups. Oh. Now, each one had their own setup. <laughs> they don't do that anymore. They have one setup of people. Stand around it and mm-hmm. get a ch- they draw lots for who chooses first and who chooses second. And I uh, mean, you you planned uh, whatever they were to draw, whether it was a still life or I had yeah, they were still life, uh-huh. and we had a portrait uh, thrown up in the center of the main studio and had a portrait model every day or a life model. Mm-hmm. And then we had I figured out a person here and. Two people here and six people here and ten people around the model. Mm-hmm. And that was the most I could take. Now, if there weren't ten portrait painters on that particular day, which there weren't on a Friday or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> there wouldn't be so many in that room. But the still life places were all taken always. And some of the setups are very large. Biggest side of this room, <laughs> and I had to put them together and take them apart. And we used that room for the children on Saturdays. Both the rooms were used for children, so 
I had to make it possible for them to be used. Well, what, what sort of setups would you plan for the children? Well, that was, I, I finally got other teachers for the I got Edith Bose and taught the uh, 10 to 12 group, mm -hmm. and Ann Kremiak taught the younger ones. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, they, would be they would be responsible. I see. Well, did the children draw still lifes? Or? No, they did uh, whatever <laughs> Bose asked them to do. Mm -hmm. And I think her great thing is that she told them how good they were all the time, but they, they didn't, uh, you know, they splashed around, and yeah. I don't know that they learned a whole lot, but they felt good about doing it anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. <clears throat> well, when it came to um, selecting models for um, life drawing, were you responsible for getting someone to do I that? I had to get everybody, and because mm -hmm. they, they all had friends. I had a lot of Navy people, and people at the War College would come in at their friend's behalf and pose for a week, and I would pay them. Three three dollars a day I paid. <laughs> three dollars a morning, uh -huh. and um, it wasn't much, was it? Well, I'm sure in those I days if it was three. So I don't I don't can't remember for sure. Mm. But some of them didn't um, want to be paid. They just wanted to mm. see the portrait. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the staff of the art association? Uh, were you responsible for getting other teachers, or was that done by some? I could I could do anything I wanted about the school, and that was my job. Mm -hmm. So you, you and chose I others. I paid their salaries, you know, my teachers' salaries, and I paid my own salary mm -hmm. and um, paid all the expenses of the school. So I had what was left. Oh my goodness! Well, you really—you did everything. I did everything upstairs on the second floor. Downstairs, they had a secretary and a treasurer and so on. Oh well, what were they doing down there? Was it a museum or? Well, it was never a museum. <laughs> never is yet now. It was always an art association, and <clears throat> the new director thinks it's not a good name, and he's changed it to a museum. Mm -hmm. But it's—it never was a museum, and we don't have anything. There's and no it, permanent collection at all, is there? there? There are some things, and they're good things, and I think he plans to sell them in the fall at an auction in New York. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of good things that were given to us, and some bad things that were given to us that we couldn't refuse to yes. take. Bruce were, Howell, who was the president, thought we should never refuse to take anything. Well, you had to make your patrons feel good, I suppose. Yeah. Well, what was the income of the Art Association? But well, they had a, uh, <clears throat> what do you call it, endowment fund oh. that people would leave money to sometimes. It was always less than we needed. Mm -hmm. We were always on the verge of having, you know, having to have a costume party that would raise money to mm -hmm. pay the call bill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or Mrs. Elliot would go out and try and get it from her friends. Mm -hmm. And they would always hate to see her coming because she was <laughs> always trying to get money from them. But um, so it really ran on a shoestring. Yeah, but it kept going. It never did close, did it? No, mm -hmm. came very close. We were in debt a lot, but we didn't have to pay taxes, and um, we they never paid any of the people that worked for them very much. Well, you say you were a director for fifty years. Were you you became director in what forty five? Let's say forty five. Yeah. So it's, um, but I I was um, teaching there between twenty six and forty one. Uh -huh. So that's really been your life, pretty much. Yeah, the Art it was. Yeah. And I enjoyed it very much, mm -hmm. and I made a lot of good friends. And at Christmas time, I would hear from people all over the world because these I had the the uh, Navy War College people, a lot of them, and they would leave here and go to Australia, to England, mm -hmm. to Germany, mm -hmm. to India, and um, I would get cards from everybody. I hope you saved the stamps. <laughs> hope what? I hope you saved the stamps. I never did. Oh. <laughs> I never did. But um, I still hear from them, people that I uh, like very much in class. I still hear from them. They telephone me. At Christmas, because they know I can't read anything. Yes. And I had telephone calls from Connecticut and, mm -hmm. and 
California and Australia. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. They were really faithful. Yeah. <clears throat> you made some awfully good friends. And England and Germany. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, um, did you ever pay any attention to the um, administration of Newport itself? Did you ever get yes, interested? Yes, we used to go to the council meetings all the time. Did you? And try and make protests about things, mm -hmm. or make a showing if there was something coming up that we wanted to uh, see what was going to be done. You say we? Do you mean you and your family? Or well, no, our um, people. Use Bojan and I usually, mm -hmm. and other people. Yeah, we we used to go down a good deal. Mm -hmm. What were you interested in particularly? <laughs> <clears throat> well, we have a a council, you know, of what twelve people, I guess, or seven, seven, the seven uh -huh. people. <clears throat> and they can do a lot of foolish things, or things that we think are foolish anyway. And so we go down and make a protest. Just anything that was current that you thought was important, you'd go down. Yeah, and, uh, about the height, the buildings along yes, the waterfront. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. We went down about that a good many times. Mm -hmm. Well, how, how do you feel about the uh, the city? Do you think it's Fairly well run, or I th well, I don't think it's well run, but I think it's greatly improved over the time when the navy was here, and I hope they Gee. don't come back. Gee. Mm -hmm. It was um, it's just too many people when the navy are living here. Yeah, but you really feel good about the city in uh, most ways, do you? Or well, it looks a lot cleaner and better yeah. when everybody who comes here wants to live here, so they fix up. On the old houses, and they, mm -hmm. there isn't a house that isn't painted mm -hmm. <laughs> in Lower Town Street, for instance, which used to be such a mess. Mm -hmm. And Spring Street was always a hideous street. Now the only house that isn't painted is Carstings. <laughs> it's, it's really um, amazing. It, yes, it has changed a lot just since I've been here. Yeah, mm -hmm. things look a lot, lot sprucer. So you don't think that all the tourists coming here is a bad thing, then? Well, I'm glad that we lost the race because now it'll all go to Australia. I don't think we'll ever get the race back here. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it'll go to San Diego next yeah. if they bring it, if we win it, which I doubt if we do. I think they'll keep it forever, maybe. <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> and we were so glad that they won. <laughs> we were hoping they would. Isn't that all right? Yes. Did you know. see the race on the television? We you know we had to go to Washington that day and missed it. Oh, I'm so a shame. sorry. Yes, but we did see it was a, lot a great, of um, great race. Yeah. Well, you know, we would uh, just tell me uh, generally how you feel about living in Newport now. You having your, spent your life here and still living here. Well, I'm so circumscribed by my bad eyesight that I really don't get around much. I can't drive the car anymore, and I used to have this nice little car that would take me anywhere. Mm. And now I can't go anywhere unless I'm taken, and I feel like a silly baby. But aside from that, do you think Newport is doing well, or do you think it's oh, changing sure. for the better? I think the they're worse? very lucky how well it's doing. Mm -hmm. Carrie, I wanted to ask you about an overlook. Was for you to tell me about this nice house you live in. Well, this is the one my grandmother Carrie bought for my father and mother when they were married. Yes. Well, was it already built? And it was. It was a house that was opposite the breakers and the, what's now the parking lot of the breakers oh, yeah. that was burned. And a man named Wilson, <coughs> who was an architect, bought the house and while a lot of it was damaged, he salvaged, for instance, the doors and yeah. all this uh, beautiful fireplace. This, this, yeah, and this. Mm -hmm. And I have two more fireplaces upstairs uh -huh. and this one in here. And he had also brought over, this was his dream house he was building for himself, yes, yes. and he um, went overboard on small details and whatnot. The stairs are very nice. He brought that up from the house on Oak Point, and the Dan has a fireplace he brought up. It was a period, it was built, um, it was burned down before 1900. He built this house in 1900, mm -hmm. and he lived in it four years before he sold it. And the reason he sold it is because he <coughs> had a lot of bad luck. He had um, broken both legs. Mm -hmm. 
chasing some stupid some children at a baseball game, and he fell on the bleachers and broke both legs. And it, he couldn't do any building for quite a while after that. And he got very behind, and he owed a lot of people. And so he was compelled to sell it, and because it was very lucky for us, it did, but yes. hard for him. And he died not long after that, too. Mm-hmm. He wasn't so young. He was quite well along. Well, it, how many rooms does your house have? Well, there are nine, I guess. Mm-hmm. It but, doesn't look so big, and yet it's really very roomy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you did some decorating yourself, I can perceive. Yeah, I do. I make all the curtains, and mm-hmm. I bought all the rugs. and Oh, beautifully done. And you have rice paper on the walls, do you? Yeah. It's, it's, it's not nice. rice paper. What is it? It's, um, or is it silk? It's, um, what do they call that stuff? Mm-hmm. They sell it in wallpaper books, but it has a name. It's, this has been painted because it, it turned quite dark. Oh, I got a pale. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you something more about your house. Now, you're right across from the hospital and you're right across from the emergency room. Mm-hmm. Does that siren go off very often? Do you, are you aware of that? No. Never looked at it. Oh, don't you? You're just so used <laughs> to it. I'm lucky to be here because I've had to go over there four different times, and if I hadn't been able to walk across the street, I would have died. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very lucky that I can get in this yes. way. It's a good location. Now we're resuming our interview on March 22, 1984, and Miss Carey, uh, I would like to ask you some questions about what you remember of World War One. First of all, do you remember what Newport looked like during the summer of 1916? I'll turn it off a minute, Ron. Um, in other words, uh, how old were you when in 1916? I was 11. And you lived right here? Yeah. And do you remember anything special about how your neighborhood looked at that time? Well, we were still playing games in the hospital yard. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you we remember were, when, when we were watching the war? We were concerned about it, but we weren't uh, old enough to be embroiled. Yes, certainly. Uh, do you know what you were doing when uh, the war began? Do you remember hearing it? We, we made a lot of woolen mufflers, I can remember that. But you don't remember them. the announcement of going into war. Yes, I do remember that. How did you hear about it? I guess it was on the radio. Uh-huh. Um, well, when do you think that Newport fell, fell, first felt the impact of the United States' entry into World War I? Remember it affecting Newport directly? I'm always mixing up World War I and World War II. Uh-huh. I really don't remember yet. Did, you, uh, did anyone in your family serve in the war? No. Mm-hmm. Did um, people in the neighborhood or your family join in the war effort? You mentioned the mufflers. Well, the children are all making mufflers and balaclava helmets. Oh, to send it to the troops? Mm-hmm. To send over to the troops? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the um, my brother was born in 1916, mm-hmm. and that was a big event because my father always wanted a boy. Mm-hmm. So uh, I guess we were more concerned with the new baby than we were with the war. Mm-hmm. Um, do do you remember how you felt or other people felt about all the recruits coming into the naval training station? Did that make an impact on your lives? A lot of people around, awful lot of people, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, navy, a lot of um, marines. Did it change the city that you were aware of? Well, you see, we were too young to get downtown much, mm-hmm. and uh, as I say, we were. We had the new baby, and we were playing games, like loose stocks, as I mentioned last mm-hmm. time. I don't think that I uh, can tell you much more about that. Um, were you aware of the torpedo station at that time? Yes, we were. Mm-hmm. And I can remember the armistice. Mm-hmm. I was in a, a place downtown, and all the bells started to ring. I was in a... Drugstore having a soda, I think. And all the bells started to ring, and somebody said the war is over, and I was 
it was so exciting because uh, everybody started to cheer and mm -hmm. <laughs> rush around. Mm -hmm. That's all I can remember. Mm -hmm. Uh, did your mother, your mother probably didn't have time to do any Red Cross activities, did she? She was so busy with her work. Well, no, she really did, though. Did she? She was in, uh, there was a place up on the corner of, I guess it was Everett Street, no, Man Avenue, maybe. And they had a UFO thing. Is that what they call it, UFO? No, that's unidentified. Yeah, UFO. <laughs> It, USO, yeah, and she uh, went up there several times a week to uh, help entertain the boys and bring them food, and they would come there and just have a little break from the military routine. Mm -hmm. um, you know anything about Admiral Sims? Yes, we know him well. Did you? <laughs> his, his, his wife and my mother were all tied up in the Girl Scouts, and... Uh, he used to come here bringing messages from her. <laughs> he was retired then. Uh -huh. Was that the First World War? Or the this is the First World War. Well, he was in the First World War, wasn't he? Yes, they said uh, he apparently there was a big homecoming for him or when he came home. Oh, of course. Do you remember of that? Of course, I can remember it. Yeah. Well, what happened? Well, now I can't remember except that my mother was all tied up in getting a big dinner at the Viking farm with, with his wife, mm -hmm. and they invited all the dignitaries of the town and had a band and all that business. Well, let's go now to talking about the summer colony in Newport and the changes that took place. Do you remember anything about what it was like here in Newport, the summer colony, when the, it was before it began to decline? I was asking you about the summer colony and if you had any memories of the summer colony people before the um, stock crash in 1929. Oh, yes, I do, because I was out of the School of Design in 1926. Mm -hmm. And I had a, um, a lot of uh, places that I went to teach the children how to draw or paint. And I went down to Culp's. Did I tell you about the one, you know, J J John Russell Pope. No, you didn't tell me. Well, he had two daughters, Mary and uh, Jane, and they had just built the house on the end of Ledge Road on the right, which is now owned by Chate. Oh, the Waves. The Waves, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I don't, you don't think I mentioned this before? No. Because I... <clears throat> They were so good to me, uh, taking me all over the house. He had just built it. They had just moved in, and he was absolutely uh, thrilled with it. He had his own studio for uh, his architectural work. Well, he was an architect. Yeah, he's the one that did the, uh, the big museum in, New in Washington. The National Gallery? National Gallery. Oh. He did the main, the first part of it. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure about that. He was a very famous architect. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I had Mary and Jane as students, and they took me all over the house and showed me their... They had, each of the girls had suites of rooms that looked out over the water. Mm -hmm. It was just beautiful. And they had gone to England and gotten all the hardware for the doors and the windows and the shingles for the roof. Mm -hmm. And uh, they lived there about a year when, or even less than a year, when Mary had her 17th birthday, and her grandmother gave her a roast. And uh, 
she was a wild driver and she was going down Old Beach Road and let me see how it happened. She didn't make the turn at the corner and the car rolled over and she was killed. Oh my God. Yeah, it was terrible. Oh. And it, um, she was a very beautiful blonde and they were going to have a big coming out party for her and all that. But then I had Jane for a while and but everybody was so, all the family was so flattened out by that happening. And her grandmother, let's see, wasn't her grandmother? I should have thought that out. She lived in the house where you lived. Oh, in uh, uh, Sherwood. Sherwood, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, she lived there 20 years with a man that she would never marry. <laughs> <laughs> really? A crazy woman, in a way. You don't I, remember their names. Her name was. I'd have to think quite a while, and it would take your time. That's all right. Do you remember the man's name? I want to turn it off, sure. and I'll think. Well, you didn't. You you uh, taught, continued to teach drawing to the remaining yeah, daughter. I, I taught uh, Jane, and I taught uh, the man who married Mary Gillette. What was his name? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> he he lived in Sherwood, did he? No, no. He, he was a. Uh, he was taking his first year in architecture at Yale, and he wanted to be an architect. And his mother asked me to come over, and oh, I did a powder room for the mother from Vernon and Company. Gave me the powder room to do, well, and that way I met the mother, and she asked me to teach her son, and so I did that. Where? They're the ones that own the Swiss Village. Oh, you know the Swiss Village. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we we did the drawings around in the Swiss village because the architecture was sort of fun to draw. Oh, yes. Do you know, tell me something about that Swiss village. How did it come about, do you know? Well, I'm trying to think of the names of the people now. It's just crazy not to remember them. But did they build it? They built it, yeah. Mm -hmm. When they built the big house, they built that too. How did they happen to want a Swiss village? <laughs> I didn't ask him, I don't oh. think. It was absolutely charming, though, with all these little verses that were on the plaques that were attached to the houses. Oh. And um, really a, a nice little unit that you could walk through. And she said I could go through it any time and take anybody I wanted, so I used to do that. Uh -huh. Were there people working there? Oh yes, it was run as a little farm. There were there was a bull and some cows and gardens, vegetable gardens, things like that. Very special gourmet kind of vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> Early organic farming. I don't think it was organic. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But you taught their son drawing. Yeah. For His name was Haywood. Hayward, that's his first name, and then last name was Manus, I guess. Mm -hmm. Manus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was it. Do you remember any other of the summer people you went to teach drawing to? Yes, I taught uh, Sylvia Cicciani, the little girl. What was her name? Uh, I guess it was Sylvia. She used. <laughs> I had a little class that we would take on uh, trips from the art association, and this was in the summertime. And we did drawing. I took them in the car down to the docks and so on. Or they they had several cars, you know. But they, some of them came in cars, mm -hmm. and it was really quite a good crowd. And the. <laughs> Fisherman gave all the students each a blackfish, and so <laughs> we took her home. <laughs> she, she had these brand new white sneakers, which she was sure to get good and muddy. Mm. And she said, "I hate clean sneakers." <laughs> and so uh, I don't know their name was Sylvia. It was something else. Her mother's name was Sylvia. Where did they live? In the Breakers. Oh, and when. <laughs> I took her up to the front door, 
And when the butler let her in, he said, you can't bring that in here. She said, I'm certainly going to. This is going to be my breakfast. <laughs> oh, dear. You really went down early, didn't you? <laughs> <sighs> Little girl does the same. Quite, She was the youngest in the group. Mm -hmm. Well, you did have a lot of contact with the summer colony. Well, um, just in the teaching business. Mm -hmm. Did you like them? Were they well, nice they were all you? different, and they were all um, too, what's the word? For instance, when we were painting down at Pope's, I said, you've got to have some paint rags. We can't very well paint without paint rags. And so Mary Pope said to the girl she summoned, bring me a box of handkerchiefs. Oh. And I said, I'm not going to use handkerchief paint rags. And she said, well, it's all I've got. <laughs> no rags. <laughs> Aside from your own experiences, do you think Newport was very much affected by the rich people living here? They were in the, in the late 20s, all right. Mm -hmm. What ways do you think? In what way? Mm -hmm. But they used to have a lot of uh, debutante balls and, and big parties where everybody would uh, go down and watch the people arriving and mm -hmm. their ball guns and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any special debutante ball? Really, I don't. You didn't go down? I don't remember. Uh -huh. uh, did the Newporters generally feel good about those summer colonists? Did they appreciate their coming? Or well, my mother did a lot of uh, sewing, you know, making uh, little shields for candelabra and so on. Mm -hmm. And so she used to be glad to have them here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we rather liked them, the ones we knew. And Mrs. T. Shaw Safe, who has a house on the, or had a house when she was alive, on the cliffs, she... Uh, Later moved to the corner of Bellevue and Old Beach Road, not Bellevue, um, Gibbs Avenue and Old Beach Road. Mm -hmm. And she um, <coughs> had a son named Kenneth. And she gave, when he got too old for his toys, she'd give them to us. We were younger then. Mm -hmm. And we have the wonderful star in the house and the theater, which were all antique toys that were given him, and my mother, uh, well, we all played with them a lot. We were about, oh, I suppose, seven to nine to ten to eleven. They were very attractive. I still had the theater. I don't know what happened to the others. I think my mother must have sold them when we were away. Mm -hmm. Well, when you say the theater, what was that? It's a great little theater. I'm going to give it to the Preservation Society. The uh, <clears throat> it's one that comes apart and you take it out of what looks like a yellow box about this big. Now, how big is that? About four by four or something? Like that? Not quite as big as that. I think it's about three by three, mm -hmm. or maybe a little bit less. And it um, has a proscenium arch that you put up, mm -hmm. and then all the parts. There were three sets of. Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> the the uh, grandmother's bedroom and the uh, forest and the village, outdoor village. Mm -hmm. So you would set up those, did you have actors? Uh, yeah, we had little, little actors that you could move around from the top and the back. Oh. My mother used to. Marionettes. Marionettes. Well, they were made out of cardboard, and mm -hmm. um, they weren't jointed or anything. Mm -hmm. And But she would move them around and talk like the wolf or talk like the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, what fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who was that that gave that to you? T Mrs. T. Shaw Safe. She has a... S-A-F-E? S-A-F-E, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you really did know some of those people. Um, Having fun now that the war was over. Um, 
Did you know any people who actually worked on the estates? On the estates? Mm -hmm. I can't remember any. Your neighborhood wasn't really directly affected at all by any changes in the summer colony, were they? Was it? It was. I shouldn't too think far so. Away. No. And so you weren't really affected by any changes that were that took place in the summer colony, except maybe perhaps your mother's employment was changed. Did you notice any change then? Well, she uh, was always making things. And she had a lot of customers that came to the house and bought them. Or she made them specially for them. Well, you mentioned the covers for the chandeliers. What other sort of things did she make? Well, she made some dolls. She made nine dolls for prizes in a duplicate bridge tournament they had. Oh, what kind of dolls? And they were, <clears throat> they had a long hoop skirt that had a high bottom on it. Mm -hmm. And the Bob's, Don's body went up in the air on a long string from the hook skirt. Mm -hmm. And you could open it out and put things in the bag and then slide the head and shoulders down mm -hmm. under the Clever. bag again and mm -hmm. put the loop over your arm and mm -hmm. take it around with you. Mm -hmm. And they were very attractively made and nice little heads, little Dresden, uh, not Dresden, what do they call those, bisque china mm -hmm. heads. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Oddly enough, some years ago, when I was cleaning out, after my mother died, cleaning out the place to sell them to anybody that would buy them, I put these little heads, we had six of them left, with no, no hair on them even, just the heads. And a, a woman who runs an antique shop out in Portsmouth bought them. And she paid very well for them, and she sold them for about five times what she paid me. They were evidently very good ones. Yeah. The you know the kind the eyes go up and down, oh, and they yes. have lashes mm -hmm. made of hair and so on. Mm -hmm. Let's talk now a little bit about the Fall River Line. You say you traveled on it. Yes, we went down every winter, but from the time we were very small children. To New York? You mean? To New York, mm -hmm. because my mother's mother lived there, and we used to go down for about a month every winter. Oh. Well, yeah. It was um, wonderful fun. We loved the Fall River Line. One of the best things Newport ever had, I think. Mm -hmm. What did you do when you went on the boat? Well, we go on at 9 o'clock. A.M.? P.M.? No, P.M. PM. At night. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, get to New York at 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh. You, so you slept all night? Yeah, we had a little... You, you, you don't remember it at all. No, it died before I got here. Oh, it was just the best way to go to New York. It was such fun. And they were so beautiful, the boats. And we used to have a stateroom, a bunk, one above the other, you know. My sister and I would sleep in the top bunk and my mother in the bottom bunk. And uh, we were quite small when we started. Afterwards, we had to get two two staterooms because we couldn't both sleep in the same yeah. bunk because we were getting too big. But we went down through 1918, which was the last time the boat went down the river because the, the sound iced over on 1918. Oh, and it couldn't get through. Well, then you you took the state room and you arrived in New York at 5 in the morning and then... We out. went down at 9 o'clock and got there at 5 and then uh, you land down in the tip of Manhattan near Fulton's Fish Market. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And all the people were, all the chefs from the hotels were coming down to pick up their food for the day in all the markets along that place. It was a market district. Mm -hmm. And um, we would get a taxi, I suppose it must have been. It was a car then. Yeah, a taxi, and drive up to my grandmother's place on 72nd Street. West or east? Mm -hmm. Was it the west side or east side? I 
can't remember. Isn't that funny? Mm. It was on the corner of um, Amsterdam Avenue. Mm -hmm. West Side, sure. Uh, you didn't know anybody who worked on the line, actually, did, did you? you just on the knew it, on the line, no. you just knew it from traveling on it. Mm -hmm. Do you do you have any opinion about um, what the Fall River Line meant to Newport in the way of providing jobs? Well, it was very well missed when it was discontinued, but it couldn't keep up with the trains that were carrying the freight. See, they were they chiefly did they got their money from the freight that they took to New York, from New England, mm -hmm. which was all brought down to this dark long walk, the end of long walk. And uh, when the trains on the trucks started taking it down, they just didn't have enough overhead to keep it going because they were expensive boats to run. Mm -hmm. You know, they were side wheelers mm -hmm. and uh, had a wonderful dining room and marble staircase and all that business, red carpets everywhere. Mm. Did you ever eat in the restaurant or did you have Yes, dinner? we used to have dinner there on the way home. Uh -huh. We'd go on at, um, what time did we go home? We'd get in at 3 o'clock in the morning. I guess we left about 5 o'clock mm -hmm. or it's just 5 o'clock in the afternoon, yeah, because then the boat was loaded in New York. Mm -hmm. and. <clears throat> We'd have dinner on the way home because that was a good time for dinner, you know, mm -hmm. sometime in the evening. The food was good? Oh, very, yeah, very. There are a lot of uh, Far River Line people around Newport. Did you ever meet any of them? No, I don't They're think so. They're crazy about the Far River Line. Mm -hmm. And uh, King Colville, who had the house on Washington Street, had a whole collection of Far River Line paintings of the boats and... Um, a great enormous paintings of the boats, mm -hmm. and he bought when they sold out the furnishings of the boats. He bought a lot of blankets and spreads and what else? Oh, the silverware that they had on the tables. And when he died, and they, there was an auction by his children of his things, not his children because he never married his nieces and nephews. They um, brought enormous sums because there were so many people who wanted them. Oh, I suppose so. Mm, and we still have some blankets from them. Have you? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any certain of one or two of the boats to, to describe them? Well, the Commonwealth was a, perhaps the, the biggest and most beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Priscilla was a smaller boat. There were five of them. Mm -hmm. And I they, wonder I mean, if I can remember all their names. I don't suppose I can. Oh, and I'd have to do an awful lot of thinking. How many decks did they have? Well, now that's hard to say. Isn't it? I think three. Coming up. Mm -hmm. Did Did your mother let you run around? Oh, we <laughs> we thought we owned the boat. Uh -huh. <laughs> My sister and I would just play games on them, you know, hiding in them. Uh -huh. Nobody minded that you did that. I don't know. <laughs> we were <laughs> noisy. Did. We were quiet. <laughs> I see. But we liked to explore. Uh -huh. And we liked to look down into the engine room, which was enormous, you know, with a great big camshaft running the whole uh -huh. length of the boat to the back propeller, uh -huh. which helped out. But the um, the main uh, main thing was the side wheeling business. You know the wheels that turned. I guess they went this way. Mm -hmm. Clockwise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did did the motors make a lot of noise? Was it a noise? No, motor? no, it wasn't noisy. Mm -hmm. You could hear it mm -hmm. as a kind of a throbbing undertone, but it wasn't objectionable. It didn't keep you awake at night. No. I can still see those staterooms so clearly. A little basin in the corner and a high threshold that you had to step over. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, a chair that you could put your suitcase on. Mm -hmm. And hooks on the wall to hang clothes. They weren't very big. They were much smaller than our bathroom upstairs. Mm -hmm. Well, what, how, how many feet would you say? 
Yes, I couldn't. See, when we when you're small and things look bigger to you, mm -hmm. I couldn't really say. True. Or just the, the length of a six foot man lying in the bunk mm -hmm. would probably be maybe the bunk was maybe the it was eight feet this way. Mm -hmm. His head would be close to the wall. It, it probably no, it was probably seven feet this way, the long way, and maybe. Five or six, the other mm, way. It was small. It was small. But yeah. that was all you needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were they attractively decorated? They were very functional. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't get the prize sweets. You know, they had well, bridal sweets and all that. Didn't need that. Huh? You didn't need that. No. <laughs> but what about the, the dining areas and the. Oh, uh, that was lovely. Mm -hmm. And they always had a good band. And you know, they played dinner music and whatnot. And Where did the musicians come from? Oh, there were always a lot of musicians around. <laughs> yeah, but I do music. They Over stayed there. with the with the firm, you know, with the mm. Paul Rivaline firm. Mm -hmm. You didn't know any any new porters who were in the band, hmm? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> I guess a lot of tourists came in on the Fall River Line. Yes, Newport. they did, and, and the rich people came up on it too. Mm -hmm. It was a good way to travel. Mm -hmm. Very pleasant. Were you aware of tourists in those days when they came in? Did you notice them particularly? Not like today, I suppose, but did you notice that they came in and did anything? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I don't think the tourists were very... See, we weren't a tourist city. We were a small industrial city, I suppose you could call it. Mm -hmm. But mostly a summer playground for the rich. Yes. And nothing much for the tourists to do if they did come. Oh, quite different from huh? yeah. those days. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk now a little about about the the depression in Newport. Um, first of all, did did you notice whether it affected the summer colony very much? I wouldn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, what about Newport? Were you aware of what it did to Newport? Well, I was aware of what it did to the house here because my father was a poor businessman, and he had a double, two mortgages on the house, and um, he had such a job trying to get the money to pay the installments on them, mm -hmm. and more so after the um, depression started. Mm -hmm. That's why he took the job as a chauffeur. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, do you remember? The first impact of the, um, aside from that aspect, do you remember anything that, that happened to Newport as a result of the crash? Anything dramatic? No, I really don't. Mm -hmm. Didn't affect uh, your standard of living very much then, and the people here in the neighborhood. Well, of course, I, we didn't know anybody in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Isn't that silly? We just say well, hello, and we, we, so we never busy. would exchange such private matters is, are you having a hard time? Mm -hmm. She didn't notice anything. Do you remember the Civic Employment Association? Civic Employment uh -huh. Association, uh -huh. CIA. Yeah. Yes, I think I do. And the WPA. Mm -hmm. Very well, the WPA. The um, A lot of painters that just got out of school in my class and in the classes in that neighborhood in the late 20s, Got work in the WPA painting murals and post offices and hospitals, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And they were darn glad to get them because artists suffered more from not being able to keep going. Yes. And I think Roosevelt did a great job on that, don't you? Yes. Some of those murals are very valuable today. Yeah. Was any of that painting done right here in Newport? Yes, it was. Oh. Do you know who did it? Well, Opie Spengler, <laughs> he was a boy in my class. What was his name? Opie Spengler. I guess he was later than I was. But he, he did very well with the WPA. What did he paint? I'll let me try and think. He went to Florida to paint some murals down there in the post offices, as I remember. He didn't paint the post office here. Was it built before the... 
the depression? The local post office. I can't remember. The uh, store that was where Almex is now, up in the avenue, was the, um, what was it? Was the, turn it off. That was the first national. And store. somebody did marvelous murals in that, and they were all painted over when Almex. So. Oh, what a so pity. Do you know, can you think of any other changes in Newport that resulted from the federal eco economic policies like the WPA? Well, I know a lot of boys that went out to learn how to be foresters. Is that the CIA? No, no, that's the <laughs> CCC. I think. CCC, that's right, CCC. Yes. They loved it. They absolutely Did they? loved it and still are foresters. Uh -huh. Is that so? Mm -hmm. but well, they I have guess they're dead now. But I mean, they became... Uh, Really taken with it. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember when the depression began to lose its effect in Newport? When things began to get better? As soon as the war started. That not until then. Uh -huh. uh, what about the end of prohibition? Did that affect uh, Newport in any way? I mean, was did that help end the depression? When did when did prohibition end? In 1919, I believe. No, no, that's, no when it it began. that's when it began. Yeah. In 1933. Yeah, well, after that, the bootleggers, <laughs> there were a lot of bootleggers around, and after that, prohibition was rescinded because they didn't have anything to bring in that would get them any more money than the real things. So I suppose they all supplied the real things after that without having to have fights in the bay. Mm -hmm. But the, the bootlegging was very strong around here. Um, of course, the torpedo station closed after the uh, After what? They said, were there rumors that the torpedo station would be closed? And did it affect Newport when those started spreading? Is that the question? Yes. I don't know. You mean during the Depression? Mm. Well, whenever the torpedo station closed, which was, I guess, after the war, wasn't it? After the Second War. Yes. Mm. Um, did people know it was going to, to close? Was that a surprise? It was a blow, but they, they decided to keep the place where we went to do the drafting as the main place for the torpedo station and to close the island mm -hmm. because they thought it was safer on the mainland than it was on the island. I see. That didn't. That must have affected the jobs of some people. Well, it may have, I suppose. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about prohibition. Do you remember any of those years? How old were you? Let's see. It was passed in 1919, and you were then, I guess, 14 years old. Did you remember any? Uh... Some of the colony houses to do it, and one was Dr. Jacobs' house, which is now torn down. For Salva Regina's um, dormitory, oh. right on the corner of that road in Oka Point that goes by the Pennard Cottages and turns into Salva. Oh, and uh, um, no, it's for the Narragansett. Hmm? Well, anyway. Yeah, it probably was Narragansett and uh, Oka Point Avenue, mm -hmm. and. Uh, <coughs> They made a big play. It had to go to the to the citizens to say whether they would have it here or not. They decided everybody was making such a stew about having it. You know, they did. Some wanted it very much, and some didn't want it at all. Mm -hmm. And um, the gamblers had put so much money in buying this house, which was a a beautiful house, and they wanted to have a really deluxe thing. And of course, they said they would give so so much to the city and so much to the Charities and so on, mm -hmm. but it was defeated by the citizens in a vote. Mm. I didn't know that was a problem back in those days too. Like it's been that. defeated three times oh. in votes when they bought places to run gambling uh -huh. things. Well, you say uh, people made home brew. Do you, did you know anybody who made it? Sure, I drank plenty of. <laughs> <laughs> Where did they make it? I don't know how they made it. Um, I suppose you get a big pot and you put things in it and you boil it and then you 
bottle it and you chill oh. it and then it, you drink it and it tastes horrible, but you think it's wonderful because you <laughs> don't know any supposed to <laughs> supposed to like it. <laughs> Nobody really made it in bathtubs. <laughs> I don't know, I, but they always said they did anyhow. Uh -huh. you know how it mm -hmm. Something I do. Mm -hmm. Well, now you must remember the hurricane of 1938 because you were living in Newport then. And where were you when it happened? Didn't I tell you all that the other time you were here? I don't remember that you did. Oh, I think so. Something, something terrible. But I think I described it quite lengthily in the, right, the well, last time you were here. Okay, well, we'll skip over that and talk about World War II. And you worked at the torpedo station. Mm -hmm. You told me about that. Well, um, we went out there drafting. Yes. For three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Did you, any member of your family go to war in the Second World no. War? No. You weren't affected that way. Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, any kind of volunteer work you and your mother and sister might have done, or your brother? Did any Red Cross work? or? Yes, you know, everybody did Red Cross work. Mm -hmm. Rolling bandages and picking lint and whatever it was they did. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I was out there at the cove quite a long day. It was, um, we'd get out there at 8 o'clock and stay till about 5.30 or 6, depending on whether it was a rush order that we had to get out or whatever. Mm -hmm. Did um, the uh, torpedo station attract a lot of people from their ordinary jobs to go work there for more money? Do you know? You mean during the war? Mm -hmm. I really wouldn't know about that. Mm -hmm. um, well, I know that Newport um, did a lot in the way of putting up defenses in this area. Um, did this make people afraid of being a target? Did they feel more secure because of these installations? It was anti-aircraft, I believe, wasn't it? They had anti-aircraft guns, yeah. Mm -hmm. They work? had them on Jamestown, around Fort, uh, Fort Weatherall. Mm -hmm. They're still over there, I guess. Did you think about that? Did it bother you to think that... Um, well, you know, yeah. when you're young, uh, everything is exciting rather than worrying. Uh -huh. And uh, there were people that watched airplanes, you know, watch for airplanes. What do they call those people? Oh, that recognize planes or something like that. <laughs> yes. But um, mm -hmm. spotters, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was so busy at the out there in Melville where we went to the do the drafting that I didn't really mm -hmm. I wasn't home all day, except weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, yeah. and not very often on Saturdays, really. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that homeowners were required to take sort of some sorts of uh, security measures for their homes. Did you have to do that? What kind of security? Well, like blackout curtains. Did you have to have them? Yes, I guess we did. Mm -hmm. I can't remember that we put them up every night. Isn't that funny? I can't remember that. Did anybody in the neighborhood go around and uh, check? Did you have signs? Yes, we did. We had neighborhood people that were responsible for blackout. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? I should know that thoroughly. No, I can't remember everything. Um, I remember that we had blackout curtains because I remember when Mother dyed some to be black. Oh. <laughs> well, do you remember at the end of the war, uh, what happened on VE Day or VJ Day? <laughs> we were down in Provincetown on VE Day, v, VJ Day, and we were out on a projection of complicated rocks that went out at the end of the harbor. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was rather hard going to get out there without getting wet because the place you had to sort of jump. It was a breakwater, but it was in bad repair. 
Florence, my friend, and I were out there on the rock, and suddenly all the bells and drums down there, a lot of churches along that yeah. main street, started to, it was a beautiful day, absolutely the most beautiful day, and they started to ring, and we couldn't think what was, what was ringing for, and then we decided it was VJ Day. Mm -hmm. It was in August. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, it was quite exciting. We got in somehow or other. <laughs> we sort of swam in in our clothes. <laughs> we had taken a picnic out there in our clothes, but and we didn't have any bathing suits, but we thought we'd better get in and help celebrate. <laughs> So you missed it in Newport, but you saw it in Provincetown. That's right. Mm -hmm. What about VE Day? Was that a big event here? I suppose it was, yes. We were so thrilled it was over, mm -hmm. except for the Japanese. And we knew that the Japanese would not take forever. Mm -hmm. It took them, what, quite a while, though, nine months. Yeah. Did you um, attend any of the jazz festival concerts? We went to the first one and it was very attractive up in the casino block. You go in the main entrance to the casino and where they had the tennis courts where they played the championship mm -hmm. matches, mm -hmm. they had set up chairs and uh, a stage and had the jazz people up there on the stage and it was it was a very beautiful night you know if the if the weather is windy and cold and <laughs> rainy it's no good mm -hmm. but this was a good night and we we enjoyed it very much and then do you remember any of the musicians that first night no i don't mm -hmm. they were all well known but i don't remember them yeah. was it a rather uh Formal atmosphere, or was it? Well, uh, people had boxes. Some of them. Mm -hmm. We sat in chairs, mm -hmm. and uh, it was very well run and small. Mm -hmm. But the next year it was terrible, and people were uh, rioting and tearing the building apart. And the firemen got out their hoses, and people were damaged by the police and were taken to the hospital. <laughs> And we were afraid to go home hard. We were, you know. Well, you were there too. Hmm? Yes, we were there, and mm -hmm. um, it was in Peabody Park, I guess. Mm -hmm. at the time. Did you have any trouble getting home? I can't remember. Yes, I do remember. Yes, we did have trouble. <laughs> we were scared to death, actually. Mm -hmm. And we. My father was afraid we were going to be hurt, too. He was home, and he had gone to bed, I guess, and Mother had, too, because it was always late when those things started to break up. Yes. And they they kept the party so much that they kept going. But it was a, a very wild night in Newport, and all the uh, business at the tear gas was used a lot by the police. Mm -hmm. And they people had to go to the hospital and so on. Did it affect you? Did you feel tear gas? We got out early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could tell what was coming. <laughs> mm. Well, we, we thought we'd better get home. Mm -hmm. And when, by the time we got home, all the activity was right here <laughs> across the street. Oh, of course, they were bringing people to the hospital. Yes, of yeah. course. Oh, that was a bad night. Terrible night. Well, what caused them the, the riots? Why why did they start? Oh, I don't know. A few reference, I suppose. I don't remember. I don't. There was a whole lot about it in the paper, of course. Mm -hmm. And my mother had a book about it that she uh, got a lot of clippings and put in the book. I wonder if the Historical Society would like some of her books. She has uh, a book about sure. the hurricane and a book about the. Uh, Jazz festival. I think they would. Mm -hmm. um, I'll look those up and you can show them down there and see if they want them. All right, fine. 
Uh, how do you think the city uh, managed in uh, handling those disturbances? Do you think they were doing a good job or could they have done better? Well, of course, they got a lot of criticism for how they handled them, did they? I really don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think the festival should have continued? You know, they ended in 1971. No, I thought it was a great idea they stopped them. Mm -hmm. I don't like jazz anyhow. Oh, you don't? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like it. I didn't go much after they uh, uh -huh. moved it from the casino. So you hope it never comes back, although it is here again, but you hope it won't be like that. Doesn't seem I any. never go, mm -hmm. and I hate it. So uh, mm -hmm. I really don't like jazz in any back then. I hate rock and roll. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> There's a big difference. <laughs> There's a big difference? Uh, you like jazz. Well, now let's talk about the Navy fleet, and it's leaving Newport. Uh, do you, were you much aware of what happened when the Navy pulled out? Well, I had a, a painting class at the Art Association, and uh, I was concerned that all my students would be leaving, but as it happened, the war cars didn't pull out. It was just the fleet, and I only lost a few people. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it was a very good thing that they did leave, and I think we wouldn't have done half what we did if they hadn't left. Mm -hmm. I think we did much better after they left than when they were here. Well, do you think, though, that uh, any people lost their jobs because the fleets left? I suppose so. No, you don't no. know of anybody who did lose a job? And no, I don't. It, did it affect your neighborhood in any way? Well, of course, everybody was disturbed because it sounded as if everybody was leaving Newport, all the Navy were leaving. Mm -hmm. But it turned out that the best of the Navy was still here, the Justice School and the all the different educational Navy things were still here, mm -hmm. and um, I think we did much better after they left. Mm -hmm. And I guess the city does too. I hope they don't come back, but they are coming back, aren't they? Yeah, I suppose they are. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know where they'll put them. Yeah, it'll be difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of Navy people have retired here to Newport. Mm -hmm. Why do you suppose they chose Newport? It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Don't you think so? Yes. They've had a chance to go anywhere, and they either choose the West Coast or the East Coast, and they like Newport much better than Norfolk. Mm -hmm. So, And I think everybody that comes here now wants to stay here. Don't you think mm -hmm. they do? It certainly is attracting a lot of people. Yeah. Um, do you think the Navy people settled in any certain areas, or do you, were you aware of where they did go, where they like to live? Well, they built that Brenton Village, you know that. Mm -hmm. That was pretty ugly over in Fort Adams. And there were, people hated to live there, too. Uh, but that is that the part that was torn down yeah. is now a park, but that wasn't for retired people. That was for um, active people. Active people, yeah. Um, did no, you the, nowadays they have you know they live where they can and a lot of them are living the retired navy are living in Doris Duke's restoration houses. Yes, that's true. Um, did you ever see uh, Friday or Saturday night on Ten Street when the fleet was in? I didn't go down. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there was a reputation about that time of the week. Huh? Yeah, the fleet then. Mm -hmm. I guess I, I do remember that. Well, we just didn't feel like going down. Mm -hmm. What would you do if you went down there? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's talk about the Newport Bridge and the ferry. Did you used to take the ferry from Newport? To go where? Anywhere. New York, oh, perhaps? You don't go to New York on the ferry. No, but you had to go um, to um, Jamestown and get on the train or, or the take your car or what? I don't know how you did it. No, we, we um, when I went to Providence to school, I'd take a trolley out to where the Mount Hope Bridge is now mm -hmm. and then take a ferry over to Bristol and then take a trolley into Providence. Mm -hmm. But when you... 
<clears throat> Did you ever go to New York by way of the ferries? There's no, there was no ferry to New York. Just the part no, of the know, But I'm, you didn't drive to New York from uh, the mainland then? No. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, since, so you really didn't ride the ferry very much, I gather. Which ferry are you talking the about? The ferry from Newport to Jamestown. And then from Jamestown. Oh, we used to go to Jamestown. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> we had friends over there. Uh huh. And uh, that was a sort of a pleasant ride, too. How long did it take? Let's see, it's four miles, and it. Uh, I don't remember how long it mm -hmm. took. It, it would go slower if it were foggy. Mm -hmm. And people just loved the ferry. Is that so? You'd sit up on top in the front, there's a, a long bench that you can sit on. Mm -hmm back against the bridge mm -hmm. and it was just beautiful especially in the late afternoon mm. you see you all the things in the harbor people just ride back and forth on the ferry <laughs> for fun oh, really yeah you remember any certain boats that were on the ferry line the boats on the ferry mm -hmm. oh they had funny names like Canonicus and mm. Jamestown and I don't remember more than that. I've heard that there were some troubles with uh, maintaining the ferry boats. It was all done from Jamestown. Was there, do you know anything about that? I mean, keeping them clean? Mm -hmm. Just keeping them in repair and keeping them clean. I know that the people, the students in Jamestown came to Rogers High School to go to school here, and they all rode the ferry. Mm -hmm. Well, were you glad when the bridge was built, or were you sorry to see the... You mean the Mount Hope or the, the Jamestown the, Bridge? The Newport Bridge, the new no, mm. Newport Bridge. I don't think it's very pretty, do you? I, I think it's rather nice. Do you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's very pretty. handy, yeah. Yeah, but you really missed the ferry boats. We huh? missed the ferry. Uh -huh. Everybody was sorry that the ferry stopped. They hoped it would also go, mm -hmm. but of course there's no need for it. I've heard that there were some petitions being passed around to keep the ferry going. Did you sign one of those? Oh, sure. Did you? <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, well, um, now I'm interested in the uh, restoration and redevelopment of Newport. Uh, were you aware of all the old colonial buildings of Newport and their states of deterioration before oh, the renovation? Oh, they were in terrible shape. Yeah, you, did you think about them? You mean with the urge to do something yes. about it? And mm -hmm. I had no money at all. No, but I mean, <laughs> do you think it was a would be a good thing to restore them? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. You realize that they were of value. Well, I tell you, they were they were in such terrible shape. When they took out all the rotten wood out of a home they were preparing, you know, the Doris Dukes people were preparing to restore. There wasn't anything left but the shape. Mm -hmm. The pile of wood that was taken out was higher than the <laughs> And it stunk so. Oh. Oh, of urine and uh, old oh. wet plaster. Because uh -huh. a lot of them were had been cheap boarding houses for a long while. Yes. And were in terrible condition. Yeah. Um, they were all slum territory. <laughs> yes, they were. Did you know any of the people who act, did any of the restorations, the actual work on those buildings? The carpentry? Mm -hmm. you know? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. you, did you know anybody who uh, was affected by the fact that these were moved? Or anybody who lived? You didn't know anybody who lived down there, but did you hear of anybody being affected because they had to give up their? Give up? I didn't hear about it. Uh huh. And uh, a lot of the. You had to find another place for them to live that they could afford to live in is the idea of where they could buy it and uh, the houses were cheap of course because they were in such bad shape yeah. but you did have to find a offer them a place to live and that was the the big difficulty mm -hmm. that's why they built park home i guess oh was that it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go to city council meetings or planning board? Oh, board? very, very Did often. you hear them talking about this kind of renovation? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, over and over, huh? 
we went down to the city council many, many times mm -hmm. to for all kinds of things. Do you remember uh, how people felt about this renovation? Did they protest? Oh, they were delighted because they, they did it so well, mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. In a way, all the houses look a lot alike in different colors, don't they? Mm -hmm. She. Uh, and you, like you couldn't change them outside at all if you bought, if you uh, rented them. You couldn't change them at all. Mm -hmm. You had to leave them just the way they left them. And of course, they were doing it the way the houses were supposed to look at the time they were built. Yes. And well, before Doris Duke's work began, there was Operation Clabbered. Did you know anybody who uh, restored any of those houses? When well, Fisher Benson was on in on that. Mm -hmm. That's right, I forgot about Clabbert. That was Antoinette Downing, was it? I believe so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, you know her book, The Architectural History of Newport. Yes. Mm -hmm. Somebody gave it to me, I wonder where I put it. I can't, haven't seen it in years. Mm -hmm. I'll bet I gave it to my nephew. Um, okay then. Uh, there's one more thing I'd like to ask you about, and that's the America's Cup races. Do you remember, how far back do you remember a race? And the first one, that, since when they started with the J-boats. Uh -huh. Did you watch them? Oh, indeed. Mm -hmm. I had a student in my class whose husband was the one in charge of the tickets. Oh. <laughs> and he's... We went out the first day for the first race, and it was wonderful fun. We went on a minesweeper, and we were in and out and so fast and all over the place, and we just loved it. And we mm -hmm. saw, and there were thousands of boats going out, you know, the first day. Do you and remember what year that was about? Yeah, I don't. It was the first. I'm trying to think whether it was the first of the 12 meters or was it, the, was it part of the J-boats? I remember the J-boats. you remember the great big ones? I've certainly heard about them. I <laughs> didn't get to see them. Oh, they were beautiful. Oh, they must have been. They were so much bigger than anything you ever saw. I and mean, when you mm -hmm. get up close to them, oh, they were enormously high in the sail. Mm -hmm. Must have been. <clears throat> What do you think that the uh, cup races did for Newport? Do you think they were good for them, for the city? Oh, I do, yes. Mm -hmm. Up to a point. It got, I think recently we were all glad that Australia won <laughs> because it got to be such a terrible uh, lot of people here in the summer. You didn't like all those people coming well, in? Well, we couldn't, you couldn't move downtown mm -hmm. in a car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'd have to walk. You couldn't park, mm -hmm. and, and lately you couldn't get up near the boats because there was so much vandalism. But mm -hmm. when they started, we could all go up and stroke the boats could and you? watch them work. Oh, is <laughs> Talk that with so? the crews. Yeah, it was just great. Didn't attract such great crowds in those days, I guess. Yes, there were a lot of people, but they were not vandals. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And now they're all, you can't see them hardly. You go down there and you can't see them at all. Mm -hmm. But the, in, when we first went out, we went out for the first race, then the second race we went on a destroyer, and the third race we went on a cruiser. Mm -hmm. And then when Jim said, well now what would you like to go on for the fourth race? And we said, well I don't think we'd have to go. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have enough. <laughs> We'd had enough. It's a long day and... It um, is. You could really see better from the minesweeper than you could from the cruiser. Well, where did the minesweeper come from? Did the Navy furnish that? Yeah, Jim was in the Navy, and oh. the Navy were the ones that... Was that your brother? Mm -hmm. Who was Jim? It was Jim Miller who was the uh, aide to the Admiral over on the base. <laughs> oh, and he got you on the ship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that and he was given the job of handling the tickets for the spectators. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. For the Navy boats. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so, that must have been exciting. Yeah, we were very lucky because it was much more fun to go on a Navy boat because they had the entree to 
and they were part of the uh, holding the markers too, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah. But even the best, <laughs> we <laughs> didn't want to go anymore. But uh, Dorothy invited Frazier, my painting, the president of the School of Design. Mm -hmm to uh, come down with his wife from Wellfleet. He was the Commodore of Wellfleet Yacht Club, mm -hmm. and he had an old sailing boat, too. Um, what kind was it? Well, anyhow, uh, he and his wife came down, and we went over to Dorothy's for breakfast, and then we Dorothy went, who was that? Dorothy Miller. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, took them on board a destroyer and I guess it was a cruiser with a big boat and um, Frazier was <laughs> right up there in the on the bridge and he could look right ahead and see <laughs> see the cups jockeying for position for takeoff mm -hmm. and he was so absolutely thrilled <laughs> oh, well. he had a lovely day because he had never been on the Navy boats and he hadn't ever seen the cut races. Mm -hmm. and he was crazy about sailing. Mm -hmm. And um, Mary got seasick. <laughs> <laughs> but we